All right, number 15, let's call this one a high hand, which is kind of an old school way of saying intentionally. Why? Because this chapter is generally going to talk about sacrifices for unintentional sins, which we've seen a lot back in Leviticus, where most of the sacrificial system had to do with unintentional sins. And likewise, this chapter. But there's a caveat for intentional sins, which is going to read in verse 30. But the person who does anything with a high hand, whether he is native or a sojourner, reviles the Lord. And that person shall be cut off from among his people because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That person shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be on him. And this is one where I'm going to state right out that I'm going to use a lot of inference. So take it or leave it. But I think this helps explain an otherwise obscure story where the very next set of verses, 32 through 36, are going to describe a Sabbath breaker who is executed for picking up sticks on the Sabbath. First thing to notice, of course, the Sabbath was supposed to be a solemn day of rest. But one of the nuances we saw back in Exodus says they weren't even supposed to kindle a fire in their dwelling places. And picking up sticks is a, it's a way to get ready for starting a fire. And so that is a seemingly innocent act that can be an indication of a lot more. It reminded me of this. I was a huge fan of the Dog Whisperer. Still am, but I haven't watched it a while. And one of his talents is understanding otherwise innocent looking behaviors that are signs of aggression or anxiety or other stress in a dog that relates to behavior. And so he can see a raised tail in a certain breed of dog and realize that even though you haven't gotten bit yet, you're on that road. And so likewise, if the dog whisperer can understand dog behavior that well, understand we are dealing with a word that describes a God who is, like it says, his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And when we're doing seemingly innocent things, he can understand what that really means. And so the transition between these verses may possibly be interpreted as, but the person who does anything with a high hand, for example, this Sabbath breaker, therefore, the thing you might want to understand in verse 39, and it shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes, which you are inclined to whore after. Once again, harsh language. But typically when the Bible describes whoring after, it's talking about whoring after an idol. But this is one of the rare instances where I've seen where the Bible basically helps us understand clearly the idol is a choice. The idol doesn't require our service. We get to pick the idol. So even if we don't make the idol, ultimately it's a reflection of what's on our hearts and what we really desire. And so just as we've seen with the dog whisperer who is able to interpret subtle actions as an indication of genuine motives, God once again is able to interpret our subtle actions as an indication of what's really on our hearts. And what he's saying is you gotta be careful of the worst type of deception, which can be self-deception. A famous passage, Jeremiah 17, nine says it this way. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. So my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that we ask God to help us be honest with ourselves so that we do not have to suffer the consequences of telling ourselves uh, we're acting in pure motives when really, eh, you know, which is once again one of the reasons why we say his best to you as you go forward in him.